Hi everyone, it's Stacy. Thank you for coming on this yoga leap with me. Welcome back to anyone who's been practicing with me for a while. Welcome to anyone new finding the videos for the first time. Um, as you can see, I have my chair there. Um, so we sometimes do some uh, postures in the chair or using the chair like a prop. If you have any other props you like to practice with like blocks or straps, bolsters, blankets, anything, go ahead and grab those. I'm mostly gonna be staying on the mat today. I might pop into the chair to offer a few um, suggestions. I'm gonna do a nice flowy um, uh, mat flow today, not too much even standing up. So we're mostly gonna be on the mat, so it kind of uh, works well for the chair as well. So to begin, I'm gonna start seated on my mat. I'll meet you back there. So start to make your way uh, down to the mat or your chair wherever you're going to be doing your practice. And if you change your mind and you want to get in your chair or out of your chair at any time, by all means, of course, go ahead and do that. Yoga practice is about uh, doing what works for you in the moment, what feels good for your body, making adjustments, using props to modify. These are all perfect uh, ways to make your practice work for you. So I'm gonna start uh, seated in this nice, comfortable cross leg position, a little bit of a looser cross leg. If you are feeling warmed up and ready to uh, come into something a little more um, like a, a lotus or a half lotus where you want to bring one foot up and tuck it in towards the hip crease or both feet, go ahead and do that. I'm not there yet. So I'm going to start with this nice, easy seated cross leg pose. Hands can be, um, whether we're seated in the chair or on the mat, down on your lap, turned down or turned up. Um, it will just sort of uh, help you invite a different kind of energy. If you are looking to invite energy into your practice, you can turn the palms up. This will help sort of draw energy in towards you. And if you are looking to maybe calm things down a bit, depending on what time of the day, day of the week you're practicing, whatever is going on with your life, you might want to turn your hands down towards your lap and kind of ground them. Uh, that, so that feeling of connecting to something, to your body um, or your mat or your chair even, might help you lower the energy level down. <clears throat> so whatever feels best to begin your practice, uh, let's go ahead and get into a comfortable position here. If you're in your chair, you can use um, the arms of the chair or the back of the chair to help support you, but we don't want to, you know, get too slumpy or too loosey-goosey. We want to uh, maintain a little bit of awareness. And then the last thing is maybe if it feels comfortable in your space, wherever you are, closing the eyes. If not, just turning the gaze down towards the floor or the mat, resting your gaze on something still, this will help as well turn that focus uh, inward. And we can just start to notice our breath. So if we can just notice the breath without changing it, I know that's really hard the minute we start to think about it, it changes. <laughs> um, but just see if we're noticing any stickiness, noticing smoothness in the breath, noticing how deep or shallow maybe the breath is flowing in and out of our bodies. There's no right or wrong. We just want to notice where we are right now. We're just trying to spend a few minutes arriving on the mat and taking a few minutes to turn inward so we can put aside all the I wish I has and all the ooh, I still need to do's and just sort of be here for the next little while as we move through our practice. Can maybe even notice where physically in the body you're noticing the breath. Is it in the belly, the chest? Maybe it's in and out through the nostrils. And then maybe notice other things about the physical body. Notice connection of your hands on your laps, regardless of whether the hands are turned down or up. Maybe noticing where our legs are connecting, where our feet might be connecting to the mat where our sit bones might be connecting. And then just notice those physical sensations of connection and then the areas of lightness where maybe it feels like we're not actually connected to something physical. So underneath the legs, if you're seated cross-legged, maybe along the back side body, if you're not using the back of the chair to help support you. And then start to deepen the breath, inhaling to fill belly, ribs, and chest, and see if we can't fill up those spaces of connection and 
lightness with the breath and sort of imagine the breath flowing through all those points of connection, those points of no connection, just let the breath really sort of flow freely in and around you. And same thing as we exhale it all out, let it return and draw back in through all those spaces of connection and non-connection. <laughs> So we might imagine we can see the breath flowing in the body and then sort of flowing out through those spaces. Whatever works for you, inhaling to fill belly, ribs and chest. And exhale, chest, ribs and belly. If creating a little motto or mantra or setting an intention is part of your practice, you can go ahead and do that now while we continue to inhale, fill belly, ribs and chest. And exhale, chest, ribs, and belly. A couple more breaths here, and then when we're ready, we can, if the eyes are closed, start to flutter the eyes open, take in our surroundings, and then start to create a little bit of movement with the breath. Inhale, release the hands, sweep the arms up overhead, and then exhale, bring the hands down. You can open the hands to cactus or bring them all the way down beside you, depending on how much room you have. If you're on the floor, the hands might um, um, drag along the floor a bit, so it might feel better as we inhale and exhale to come into cactus arms, creating that openness through the chest wherever we are. Let's inhale here and exhale. Inhale, exhale. Good, moving with your breath. Let's inhale, sweep the arms up. Let's leave them up, reach through the side body here, grow a little longer, and then let's grab onto one wrist. I'm grabbing with my right hand, grabbing that left wrist. <laughs> That's a tongue twister. And then on my exhale, I'm gonna lift up and over to the side, finding a bit of a side stretch here. Try and stay heavy through the sit bones here. So don't come up off the sit bones. On the left side, root down, lift up and over. So we're really creating a nice big stretch down the side body here. Stay for a breath. On the inhale, release and come on back up. Let's exhale here. Wherever we are, inhale again. Exhale, inhale, stay lifted here, find that length through the side, so really root down through the sit bones, reach up through the fingertips, and then we'll grab opposite wrist and um, inhale here, root down through the opposite sit bone as we lift up and over to the other side, creating that big open stretch down the opposite side body here. Don't let that sit bone come up, stay grounded. Stay for another round of breath, full cycle. And then inhale, release, come on up, exhale. Let's sweep the hands behind us, clasping our fingers if we can. If not, just reaching, creating and leaving a bit of space behind us as if we're holding on to a beach ball. And then opening up through the chest here. Good, then let's release, inhale. Draw the hands through heart center. Bring the hands back down to our lap and we're gonna create a bit of movement through the hips and in the um, spine as well. We've done some side stretching this way. We wanna get it moving in all kinds of directions. So we're gonna root down through the, um, the knees or the thighs, depending on how you're seated. And we're gonna to start to rotate through the hips and we'll inhale as we draw the chest forward and then exhale as we come back. We can even use the knees to either push into the knees to round the spine or hold on to the knees to help round the spine as we exhale. So it's a bit of a seated rotational cat cow. Inhale here, exhale. Inhale and exhale. So creating a bit of movement in a bunch of directions through the spine here. Also noticing some movement through the hips, noticing the weight transferring from side to side. Moving at your own pace here, we'll inhale and do a couple more circles in this direction. Exhale, let's do another full circle. 
Good, let's inhale up through center. Option if you have cross legs, to uncross the legs and cross the opposite one in front and we'll do circles in the other direction. So hands come back down to the lap. Let's pull ourselves through as we inhale and then we'll start to rotate in the other direction. Exhaling here, so either pushing into the knees, maybe if you're in the chair to round the spine or holding on to the knees to help anchor you as you round the spine. And then exhale, pulling ourselves through. Sorry, inhale there <laughs> and exhale. Good, noticing the weight transfers from side to side, rotating in this direction. Just notice any differences. If there are none, great. If there are tons, great. Let's keep going here. Another couple. Inhale as we come forward. Exhale, round. Good, let's, let's do one more. All right, let's inhale up through center. Good, we can release the hands, awesome. Let's just lean the hands back here, step the feet wide. We'll do a little bit of gentle uh, windshield wiper here. If you're seated in the chair and you can do this movement, depending on what type of chair you have, go ahead and do that. Maybe just continue to do a few hip circles. All right, let's come around to all fours. We'll come into our tabletop. So making your way to tabletop. Now, if you're in the chair, I'll uh, join you in a moment. We're gonna flow through a little bit of cat-cow. So in the chair, you can continue with your cat-cow, reaching the chest up on the inhale. If you're on all fours, press through the tops of the feet, stack knees under hips, wrists under shoulders, press into the mat, drop the belly down here, pull that heart center through, just like we were doing in our uh, rotation just a minute ago. This is our inhale, and then we're gonna exhale, we're gonna round through the spine, push the mat away. So same, same, but different. We're still in our cat-cow. And rounding and dipping, inhaling and exhaling. If you wanna add some lateral movement as well, we can inhale through center, exhale as we draw our hip towards shoulder and look back over that same shoulder. We're creating a bit of a C shape with our spine here, still engaged through the core, still pressing into the mat. And then inhale through center, exhale the other way, creating that C shape. And then of course, option is to move intuitively, maybe rounding, and really sort of doing some barrel rolls. You can be moving forwards and backwards, whatever feels good. A few more rounds of breath. And then keep going if you're on the floor. And then I'm just gonna join you in the chair for a moment here. If you're in the chair, you might be doing hip circles still. You might just be finding a seated cat-cow, whatever feels good. You might be doing a little more side stretching again. That might feel good still too. So just whatever intuitive movements feel good. So keep going wherever you are. I'm just going to set us up for our sort of um, our next portion where we're going to engage the core a little bit. So if you're going to be doing this next portion in the chair, we're going to be lifting one leg. So lifting the right leg to begin and then lifting left arm. And if we feel stable here, we're going to inhale. Then we're going to exhale, draw elbow to knee, and then inhale, reach long. We'll be doing some another step if we're on the floor, but if you're in the chair, just keep going with this movement. Opposite um, hand and foot come up and then crunch and inhale and lower. So you'll just be switching sides, engaging through the core to really crunch and connect the elbow and knee and stick with that movement on the floor. There might be a couple extra patterns that I um, we can't really make happen in the chair, but we're still all working the core and the balance. So, all right, let's finish up with a couple more breaths of cat cow wherever we are, and then we'll meet in our neutral spine to set up. So in the chair, you know where you're going. If you're on the floor, let's start by kicking that left leg out behind us and then lifting it off the mat, nice straight leg. Keep this left hip drawing down towards the mat. If we feel nice and stable here, let's see if we can maybe bend the foot, reach it up towards the ceiling. Imagine you're gonna step on that ceiling, keep that hip low, and then maybe we reach our opposite arm, 
see how we're feeling here. We can inhale as if we're gonna um, step on the ceiling here and reach for the ceiling. Maybe if we're feeling warm enough, we might even reach back and see if we can grab onto that ankle. Or tap the foot or just reach back, see how we feel. And then we'll inhale, find that length again, and then lower down. And then we'll switch sides. So let's extend that right leg out behind us, nice and straight, root down, find the balance. See if we can step on that ceiling. So lifting up a little bit through the back, feeling nice and stable, reaching here, inhale, exhale, maybe tap or grab onto the ankle and then inhale, release. All right, let's do it again. We can kind of move with our breath, inhale here, exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale for length, release. Ooh, it's a lot of work, isn't it? Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Whew, let's do one more. Inhale, exhale, reaching up towards that ceiling. Inhale, and then exhale, see if we can reach. Inhale, exhale one more last time inhale exhale let's inhale step on the ceiling exhale reach inhale lower down find a child's pose so send the hips back legs can come nice and wide to make room for the belly and heart space as we melt down if you're in the chair step the feet a little bit wide and melt down over the thighs as well Staying here, take a few breaths into the backside body. One more breath. And then we're just going to lift the forehead up and we're going to walk ourselves over to one side. So we're going to walk ourselves over to say the left side here and we're going to see if we can bring that right hand over to meet the left keeping the hips even even maybe caressing them towards the back right and then lowering back down so another big side stretch one more breath and then let's lift up and we'll walk through center and over to the other side. So the right hand's going to walk over. This left hand's going to see if it can come on top. We're going to keep our hips nice and heavy, even maybe pointing out towards the left a little bit and see if we can lower down. Big side stretch. So lift the forehead, we'll come through center here. Let's come back to our tabletop position. And we're going to um, find a little bit of rotation. I'll show you an option in the chair in a moment here. So from the ground, press the hands into the floor, feet into the floor as well. We may even wanna step the legs a little bit wide and bring the toes together. This might give us more space through the torso. And we're gonna open up reach the left arm up towards the ceiling. So imagine you've sort of taken your ribs and you're spinning them along with you so the chest opens up towards the side, hand reaches up. This is our big inhale here. As we exhale, we're gonna spin back towards the mat and thread that left arm underneath the right. And we'll come through. We're not gonna stay though. We're gonna find a few breaths in movement here as we inhale and open and then exhale to lower. Now keep going if you're on the floor, if you're in the chair, our option here for a nice big twisted um, breath like this is to step the feet nice and wide. Hand can rest on the knee here, um, or we, if we have a block, we might wanna reach a little further or elbow on the knee, and we'll sweep the left arm up. So we're finding that nice twist, the chest is twisting towards the side as well, and back down. So this is our chair version, and of course we will switch sides. So let's keep going here for two more, wherever we are. And then we'll take one more inhale, and then we're gonna rest down. 
We're going to thread that arm through and either the forehead or side of head will come down and we'll just find a shoulder stretch. If you're in the chair, option to keep flowing or to bring that left arm across the body, creating a bit of a shoulder stretch for that left arm. And let's stay here for three, two, and one. Pressing into the support hand. Let's take one more big inhale, exhale, lower. Okay, let's switch sides. So just resetting, making sure we're pressing into the mat. We've got our support hand and we're gonna inhale. We're gonna pull the ribs under as we open the chest up towards the back of the room now. And then exhale, thread the needle. We're not gonna stay. We're gonna open up, inhale. Switching sides if you're in the chair as well. Inhaling here, exhale, inhale. Let's do two more. Nice big movements, inhale here. Let's exhale and stay. Thread that hand, side of head or forehead down to the mat or arm across the chest if you're on the chair. Find that shoulder stretch. Push into the support hand to help twist a little bit more through the core and stay for three, for two, and one. Let's press into our support hand. One more big inhale here, sweep the arm up. Exhale, lower, good. Find that child's pose. Reach the arms forward, melt down. From child's pose, let's lift our forehead and we're going to bring ourselves down onto our bellies. So making our way into our bellies and we're going to um, come into our sphinx pose. Um, so we're going to have uh, elbows stacked under our shoulders, hands out in front, legs along along the mat as well. And just think about sort of pretending to pull yourself along the mat so that you pull the heart space through, press into the elbows and hands we're in our sphinx pose. You can squeeze the bum to protect that low back. This is our sphinx pose looking just ahead off the edge of the mat. Nice long spine, squeeze the bum. Good. Let's release out of that. You may need to open up the elbows a little bit. Lower down. If you're in the chair, you can move through uh, a bit more cat cow. Um, as we just flow through um, a couple of rounds of spinal waves, or let me just demonstrate a couple of options here in the chair. I'll get back to the mat in a minute. If you're in the chair, we're going to be um, having our hands wide on the mat, and we're going to inhale through center and then lower down, and then inhale through center and lower down. So that's the option in the chair as well. You're going to get that twisting motion, that flowing motion with the spine, and if we are on the mat, of course, let's come on back down. Make sure your chair is out of your way. And from here, we'll just step the hands a little bit wider off the mat, still squeezing the glutes, really pressing the legs into the mat. Let's inhale to lift. And then just like those in the chair, we're going to exhale, dip our right shoulder. And then wave the spine, inhale. And then exhale, left shoulder. Inhale and exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, a couple more on each side, one more, let's inhale through center, Exhale all the way down. Good. Let's bring the hands down by our side here. And then maybe we're going to lift our feet up towards the sky. So for those of you on the mat, the gaze is still down at the mat. I'm just lifting so that my voice doesn't sound too muffled as I speak into the mat here. And then maybe we're going to squeeze the bum, 
reach for the ankles, lift the feet up towards the ceiling. Maybe we can connect, maybe not. We're doing a little bit of that warm up and we're gonna just lift the backside body up towards the ceiling. Flowing through cat-cow still if you're in the chair or any movements that we've done that feel good. Still holding for three, reaching up towards the ceiling for two, and one, lower it down, let everything go, turn the face to one side, let it go. We're gonna do another round of that. Option is to bend the legs again or zip them up nice and tight and long, hands still reaching down by our side. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna use the backside body muscles to lift our chest off the ground as we reach our fingers back and then lift our legs off the ground as we reach our toes back. So everything's lifting and reaching. Lifting and reaching, squeezing the shoulder blades, glutes, fingers, toes for three, for two, and one. Let's lower down nice and easy. Let's bring our hands underneath our shoulders and we'll push back into child's pose. Option this time maybe, you might feel nice to have the legs nice and close together. Drape the belly over the thighs and bring the hands down by your side, just so you can kind of round through the spine. Breathe into the backside body wherever you are for three, two, and one. Good, let's bring our hands up, bring ourselves up to seated here. Uh, from here, let's just do a little bit of um, stretching for our hips, a little bit more. So we're going to make our way into a nice low lunge. You can step a leg forward and we're going to set up a lunge here. Now, if you're in the chair, I'll show you in just a minute some options. Um, the chair can also be used for balance or some blocks if it feels too far away. We're going to step our foot forward and then we're going to try and sink the hips forward here. So not just about leaning forward, that doesn't do much for the hips. My body stays upright and the hips travel forward here. Let's create a nice stretch through that hip flexor here. And for me on the left, I have my right foot forward. Doesn't matter what foot you have forward, we're gonna do both sides. And then from here, anything you're holding on to for stability is great. Um, if you are leaning forward here, you might find a bit of movement. Maybe you want to uh, move the hip side to side or maybe you want to stay in stillness, whatever feels best. And staying there with your hip flexor stretch, I'm just going to show a couple options in the chair. So for the chair, um, same thing, we just might need to turn, depending on the type of chair you have, towards the side so that we can step our right foot forward and step that left one back and then rotate that pelvis under. Feel the increased stretch here. This will be your hip flexor stretch. And then we're going to flow through some hamstring stretch. You can stay here and then when you're ready, Join in for a hamstring stretch. So taking that front leg, that right leg, stretching it out front and leaning forward. I moved around to the front because my chair doesn't allow it. But really, if you are in this uh, lunge position here, option to just switch the position of the legs, lean forward, find the hamstring stretch. My side chair doesn't, my chair doesn't feel that great when I change sides like that in the chair. So positioning yourself around the chair as needed. For those of us on the floor, we're still in our nice hip flexor stretch here, and everyone in the hip flexor stretch will stay for a few more breaths. Again, if you're in the chair, stay for as long as you like. When you feel ready for the hamstring stretch, go ahead, find that hamstring stretch. For those of us on the floor, we're gonna flow a little bit. So we're gonna start to send the hips back, straighten through the front leg, toes will come back towards the face. Let's stay here for a couple of breaths, squaring off the hips. So think about kind of scissoring the legs shut and playing with the flex of the toes, seeing how it changes any sensation down the back of the leg. Let's stay here for three, two, and one. Now we're gonna flow forward, find that hip flexor stretch. You can come up or stay low and then back to the hamstring stretch. So just moving with your breath. If one feels better than the other and you want to stay in one, by all means, stay where you are needing or wanting the most stretch and sensation. We'll do a couple more here. And 
then let's come forward here back to our hamstring stretch awesome let's find a twist so we'll plant the left hand down if you have the right foot forward and twist towards the bent leg reaching up if that's too much maybe reaching back sticking your hand in your back pocket here just pushing into the floor finding the twist if you're on the floor and it's too much on the knees option is to curl the toes under lift the back knee your twist might look like this and then let's come on down send the hips back just so we can step our foot back to tabletop let's all do a couple rounds of cat cow here if a vinyasa is in your um, practice go ahead and do that going through downward dog maybe cobra or up dog and back to child's pose just a little bit of movement to recalibrate And then let's find that neutral spine and now in the chair as well as on the floor let's step that opposite foot forward so however you need to get your foot forward let's do that we'll come on up putting anything under the knee that might help support the knee we're going to square off the hips send the hips forward if you're in the chair think about tilting that pelvis under same on the mat that will increase the stretch in the hip flexor as well and then anything you need for support in your lunge here maybe you're in stillness maybe you want to find a little bit of movement it's up to you find that deep hip flexor stretch on this side and it might be different on this side you might have felt like you really wanted to move around on the last side and on this side you're not feeling it that's okay So while we're in our hip flexor stretch, keep thinking about sending the hips forward, not just leaning forward. That really doesn't change the hip flexor stretch. Think about tucking the tailbone as well. And let's stay here for another breath. If you're in the chair and you're ready for your hamstring stretch, go ahead, find that hamstring stretch. For those of us on the floor, let's bring the hands down to the mat, just so we can help lift and send the hips back as the toes lift off the mat towards the face. And again, squaring off the hips, playing with the flex of the toe. What happens if we try to flex the baby toe up towards our face? Where does that change the stretch down the back of the leg? Just tuning into the sensations and how little movements, little adjustments affect it. So again, in the chair, you may not be flowing. Maybe you want to go back to the hip flexor stretch or stay in your hamstring stretch. For those of us on the floor, we're going to do a little flowing here. Let's inhale, come forward to that hip flexor stretch. And then exhale back. So moving with your own breath, using whatever props and supports that feel good to you to help with balance, to help with padding under the knee, whatever you need, go ahead and find that. Let's pause here in our hamstring stretch just for a breath. And then come on forward. Let's find that twist. We'll plant the right hand down if the left foot's in front and sweep the left arm up or into our back pocket. A knee can be down or lifted, whatever feels best. We're going to stay in our twist here for three, for two, and one. Let's lower down. Let's push the mat away so we can swing or walk that leg back to tabletop. Let's find a child's pose. Take a couple of breaths. Let's come on up and we'll come off our knees, give our knees a little break here, and we'll do a little bit of stretching on the floor. So to begin with, let's bring the feet in creating our diamond shape, our butterfly here. You can grab onto uh, calves, ankles, massage the feet, maybe grab big toes, wherever feels best. Take an inhale here, exhale, with the elbows helping to splay the knees apart, lean forward into our butterfly. You can stay with a nice long spine here or roll down, round out the spine, relax into the butterfly.
Let's roll on up. Good. Let's extend our left leg and we'll just draw the right foot in a little bit closer to the thigh. If you're seated in the chair, you could, um, you could come into maybe a figure four, create a bit of a stretch down the um, outer hip on the right. Or if you can uh, find some kind of similar position here uh, with the foot planted on the ground, we're going to do a little bit of side stretching. So let's reach our left hand along the side of the left leg here, sweep the right arm up and exhale over. So just like in our uh, warm up, we want to make sure that right sit bone stays grounded. We want to open the heart up towards the front or the ceiling and keep spinning, spinning, spinning so that it's truly a side stretch. Let's come on up here. And just to counter that, let's plant that right hand. And as we sort of use a bit of momentum, we're gonna lift the hips off the ground. We're gonna use a little momentum by sweeping the left arm up, coming up onto the right knee, opening up here, creating a big left side body stretch from the fingers to the toes. Good, let's come on back down and let's switch sides. So we'll open up that right leg, bring the left leg in, We'll find that side stretch down the right here. So right arm reaches along the inner or outer side of the right leg. Left arm sweeps up and over. Keep that left sit bone rooted down. Spin the heart open towards the front or the ceiling. Find that side stretch. You might feel this down into the hips as well. Lucky if you do or lucky if you don't. Just depends on how our bodies are feeling. Let's stay for a breath. And then let's come on up. Let's plant that left hand down behind us and using a little bit of momentum as we sweep the right arm, we'll come up on that left knee and open up. Big front and side stretch here. And then let's lower the hips back down. Good, let's do one more windshield wiper. So we'll lean back here, let the knees fall side to side, a little bit of rotation through the hips. And then keep going until you're ready to make your way down onto your back. You can use one or both legs for um, a bit of a lever to help you down. You can roll down using your core strength, whatever works. You can even roll down um, uh, along the spine a couple of times. And if you're in the chair, you're already there. Let's draw our knees in towards our chest. We can rock side to side. If you're in the chair, option is to draw one knee up towards the chest maybe even curling in towards that knee, and then the other. You're on the floor, just drawing the knees in, rocking side to side. Nice and easy. Don't make this a big core part of the like, core workout, workout, excuse me, when, if you're in the chair lifting the knees up. Just looking to you know, curl into that ball a little bit. And then from here, let's fall into a nice gentle twist. So the knees can stay tucked in, or we can let the feet come down. Arms will spread along the floor in, the, in a T or cactus, and then we'll let the knees fall over to one side. Now you may need to scoot your hips over to let the knees come down. Think about trying to keep both shoulder blades grounded so that the heart and the shoulders are, are um, reaching up towards the ceiling and staying here for a few rounds of breath. You could even look over opposite shoulder. If you're in the chair, option for a nice twist in the chair. <sighs> We're going to inhale here and twist into one side. Our arm sweeps across our body, finds the outside of opposite knee. And depending on what type of chair you have, maybe you're using it to help guide you around into the twist as well. Now, if you were in um, your figure four, maybe you use the knee, maybe you cross the legs in even tighter and use the knee to help traction that twist. So a few options in the chair as well. I'm going to join you back on the floor for our supine twist. Let's all stay where we are for three breaths. One more full cycle of breath, inhale and exhale. And then on the next inhale, we'll draw the head back through center. 
Draw the knees up back through center. And if you need to uncross and recross or make any adjustments, scooching the hips to allow room for the knees to fall to the other side, go ahead and do that. Think about trying to get both shoulder blades to connect to the mat. Heart space faces straight up. Arms are in T or cactus. And then maybe the gaze is over the opposite shoulder on this side, staying here for a few rounds of breath. And when we're ready, let's bring the gaze back through center. We'll bring the knees back up through center. If there's any final postures your bodies are craving, maybe it's a few more rounds of cat-cow. Maybe you're looking to come into a bridge. You can lift the hips off the mat. Maybe you want to stretch out those hip flexors, excuse me, those hips a little more on the outside. We didn't do a huge amount of that in our practice today. Go ahead and find a few breaths doing any of those postures. And then we'll just get ready to move into Shavasana. So continuing with your final postures, wherever they might be. If you are in the chair for Shavasana, feet will come back down, ground into the floor. If you're on the mat, knees can be bent. Or, of course, more traditionally, a little bit straight out in front of us. Making sure to take up some space in your chair and your mat. Finding a comfortable position for your hands, either in your lap or by your sides or maybe one hand on belly and heart center, whatever works for you. And then if it's comfortable, closing the eyes and scanning the body from head to toe, just noticing if you feel like you're holding on to tension anywhere in your body and see if you can just let it go. Soften through the jaw, soften through the shoulders, the glutes, wherever you're feeling that tightness, that grip, that tension, try to let it go. You might come back to your mantra, your motto, if you set one at the beginning of class, checking in, trying to help bring that awareness back to the mat and back to the end of the practice. Shavasana is the time for our physical and energetic bodies to absorb all that good work we just did and turn it into something magical. It's a time for integration and rest and know that rest is different from sleep and that we need both every day and we should never pass up an opportunity to just rest and do nothing. Continuing to stay in your Shavasana for as long as you need. You can let the video play out or press pause here. Or if you're ready to wake up the body, bring a bit of movement, deepen the breath, wiggle the fingers and toes, circle maybe wrists and ankles. Maybe you want to stretch long along your mat or curl into a little ball one last time just before making your way into a comfortable seated position. And here we can bring our hands to our lap, our heart center, or they can be in prayer if that's comfortable for you. I want to thank you all so much for allowing me into your personal private yoga practice spaces, for, for allowing me to guide you through these um, moves. And I hope that you have a wonderful week ahead. I look forward to practicing with you through the lens here again next week. Until then, take care. Thanks everybody. Thanks for joining. I hope that that felt kind of, uh, you know, juicy and full of movement and um, a little bit of stretching and some deep breathing and I hope it was exactly what you needed for the week ahead. Take care. See you next week. Bye.